But let's step back and take a quick look at what we want from a cross web network controller. What are the problems, right? Uh, this is your traditional uh, transport network, right? It's built to support business services like L2, L3 VPNs, your mobile backhaul, yeah, even video transport, all of those services running on a segment routing network because segment routing is really simplifying the deployment of uh, services over a large scale network like that, like such a network. Um, but also importantly, because it actually now um, makes it possible even to deploy large scale segment routing traffic engineering, right? Um, with that, of course, comes challenges from the point of view of how do you actually operationalize uh, and uh, manage it on a day two basis. How do you bring in automation to do service turn up really quickly, right? Um, customers want to deploy not only VPNs for which they may have some legacy tools, but they also want to do um, fine grained path control using some path computation tools. Um, and then they want to, you know, monitor and optimize them on a real time basis when the network is converging, uh, you know, links are flapping or um, they may want to do bandwidth aware use cases where we want to measure the bandwidth on different links and either do uh, congestion mitigation uh, tactically or uh, proactively pick paths where there are bandwidths and can do bandwidth accounting and bandwidth reservation, right? So for all of that, uh, traditional approach in terms of automation has been, you know, developed or by different vendor tools. Uh, leading to all kinds of silos and also from a day two perspective, very hard to see all of those things together, right? Now, crosswalk network controller, that's the that's what it wants to do, right? It's basically a product that basically brings in uh, all these components, provisioning, visualization, monitoring, and optimization on a day two basis and help and, uh, and uh, significantly assist troubleshooting on a day two basis uh, when you have all these uh, services deployed, right? So it brings in a little bit of a SDN concepts in terms of your, um, um, uh, you know, what we call as a controller to basically do all of that uh, for, a, for a transport network, right? <clears throat> So how does it do that, right? So we said why we need it now, uh, how does it do it, right? So in terms of the uh, the components of cross network controller that are key to do that, you know, that the, 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 the whole complex of uh, the technology is in the blue box that you see here. And the network that it's managing, your large scale network is the thin layer at the bottom, right? That's your routers, you know, and this can be multiple vendors, right? Now, the key thing to note is that the, the all the arrows going from the blue box to the different uh, routers are all, you know, shown here. And there are really three categories of communication between crosswork and the routers, right? Let's look at it from the right side to the left, right? Right side is the configuration path. So we are uh, logging to the routers, um, either doing CLI based uh, configuration or netconf, right? So a lot of the, uh, you know, vendors support netconf. And even otherwise, we have what we call as CLI NEDs, network element drivers within our NSO product that can talk to a lot of the devices already, right? We have 150 plus. NEDs, as we call them, that those are the kinds of devices that we know how to talk to already, right? So that's uh, just to make that uh, point. On the extreme left, you see the control layer. This is where we are learning about the uh, deployed, uh, you know, routing topology and the routing information, including the TE information, right? Which is also redistributed in the ISIS or OSPF, right? So we are actually um, running BGP link state with the network, and that's how we are learning about all of that information. A BGP link state is a very uh, broadly routed standard based protocol. Um, that's for reading the uh, network routing state. Now, how do we actually uh, get to know the uh, SRTE policies? For that, there is another protocol, again, a standards-based protocol, PCEP, right, PCE protocol. Um, so that's run uh, by the component sort of prospect network controller called path compute element. So the path compute element is based on XR. So we have uh, SRPCE, uh, Cisco SRPC, which is basically a functionality built into the XR. And we run, uh, you know, uh, SRPCE pairs inside of the network controller complex to actually peer with the rest of the network to learn about the uh, topology as well as to learn about the policies and path control requests or delegations that uh, the head end will do to the uh, CNC complex, right? So that's the uh, control path. And then finally, uh, we do need to know, uh, for example, bandwidth consumption, right? Uh, how many links are being used? How much uh, traffic is going to each tunnel? Um, and then we may want to do more KPI uh, monitoring, right? So for all of that, we have telemetry collection. Again, SNMP has been around forever, and that's the uh, most common denominator in terms of any vendor's network. There are a lot of MIBs. Uh, some of the, the basic functionality that we do in terms of uh, just getting the uh, bandwidth consumption on links 
and the system information. Those are all very standardized MIPS, system MIP and interface MIP, IF MIP. Um, and then we are actually now switching more and more to GNMI, which is another um, uh, vendor dependent protocol in terms of uh, getting streaming telemetry out of uh, routing devices, right? And then open config models would be the equivalent of uh, MIP, uh, MIP files uh, in the case of uh, GNMI, right? So that's where we are going with the uh, GNMI capability. We already have that in the 3.0 shipping uh, product. Um, so again, looking uh, uh, further down into details on how we are, uh, what we're doing. I already talked about SRPC being the key component to do uh, path control. So when uh, when you do uh, SRT policy with the intent, uh, basically a PSAP uh, request is sent to PCE, which will do the uh, path calculation. It's able to do path calculation based on the topology that it has learned from different routing domains. Uh, all of our large scale customers run multiple routing domains. Um, and they want SR policies to span all, you know, more than one routing domain, right? If it's within a routing domain, you could argue that your head end can do it. But when you have multiple routing domains, the routing and TE database is so large that, uh, you know, a head end cannot do it at all because it only has visibility into its own routing uh, domain. That's where the PC comes in. Now, our SRPC can do all kinds of path calculation for, you know, your typical objectives such as lowest latency path, your affinity to certain uh, T link properties or uh, disjointness. But there is an additional thing we support with CNC, which is bandwidth aware path calculation. And for that, we have a, a component sitting running as an app on top of SRPC, which is shown as uh, optimization engine in this picture, where it actually aggregates the information that it's learned through SNMP in terms of your link bandwidth consumptions, your per policy bandwidth consumptions, and then it can do uh, advanced things to help with bandwidth planning and bandwidth uh, congestion mitigation applications. So that's what's running inside of Opti uh, Optimization Engine. Um, and then we have on the right side, the provisioning um, system, which is, uh, as I mentioned, NSO. Uh, you said bandwidth aware optimization. Do you do latency aware optimization also? Yes, that can be done by the, by the PC layer itself. So what you could do is you could have uh, iOS XR has this SR performance measurement. So you could actually have it measure and di di uh, distribute the uh, per link delays into the uh, routing protocol. And then the SRPC, when you say, give me the lowest latency path, it'll use that to figure out, uh, you know, the path. So if that the CNC controller is the replacement of the EPN manager, or it's a complementary solution, because you can do the pretty much similar functionality in the EPN manager, as far as I know, right? Um, so let me answer that. So EPN Manager uh, had some provisioning capabilities, but it has a lot of what we call element management functions, right? It has a lot of deep inventory and it can do a lot of fault management uh, things uh, and it will continue to exist. But what we're doing now is reducing the provisioning capabilities from EPNM and moving it to the controller based approach. Uh, that is number one. Number two is that EPNM itself over a period of time will become an app running on top of CNC, bringing in element, uh, integrating basically CNC with element management uh, functionalities. So talking a little bit about NSO. So NSO, as I was saying, it's a provisioning engine. It is model-based, right? So you have your northbound models, which are Yang models, right? You can do L2, L3 VPNs. It's been deployed forever by our customers, large-scale customers. But when you buy CNC, what you get is you get the NSO platform as well as those, the uh, what we call as function pack, the software components or artifacts that are needed to actually provision SRTE, the green box in this picture. Uh, so we can actually out of box provision SRTE for MPLS, SRV6, uh, ODN, on demand desktop templates. Um, and also it's paired up with what we call as L2, L3 VPN sample function packs, where we provide reference L2 and L3 VPN implementations and binding of those to the SRTE and, uh, you know, even RSVPTE, right? So we have all of that, um, you know, shipping with the product. The idea is to simplify uh, adoption of this CNC and introducing automation uh, from, from the, you know, from a, what we call as a turnkey kind of a concept. Uh, I've been hearing about the controller being a, well, it sounds like it's a massive uh, beast. Then the question is, is it going to be deployed on-prem? Is it going to be sold as a service? What's the type of deployment that it's going to be related to this device? Because given the capabilities that it has, I would either need a massive pizza box or I would need to put it somewhere. <laughs> right. So currently we are focusing on on-prem because all of our early customers are all on-prem. Um, so we, we require, I mean, these are deployed as a bunch of VMs, like each SRPC is an XR9K. Um, and then you have two uh, for a pair, then NSO is a pair of VMs. And the main uh, crossword infra VMs in this picture would be a, a triplet, meaning three VMs in a cluster. 
Uh, and then CDG VMs are basically, you know, uh, are kind of a scale out model, meaning for every thousand devices or so, depending on how much data collection you're doing, uh, you know, you could potentially run one CDG VM per thousand device, or I mean, that's a scaling exercise needed depending on how much you're collecting, uh, but you can add, uh, you know, uh, that kind of, uh, that's the kind of footprint I want to give you roughly, but the answer okay. depends. Uh, in terms of cloud consumption of this, it's not as a service offering, it's a product offering. Um, and uh, we do have customers interested in running in AWS and we're working with them, uh, for example, um, you know, because we distribute the artifacts in a um, VM format, like an OVA or a QCOW2, it's really easy to deploy to any infrastructure. Okay, that's fabulous. And I'm also glad that it scales horizontally, so you would only have things in parallel and it would just wrap up. Right. And then the last thing in this picture I want to mention is that there is a component, again, going back to the software software modularity, we have uh, a few uh, apps that are optional, the Health Insights Changer with ZTP, and they bring in key functionality, but they are optional, meaning uh, they are uh, besides the normal SDN controller functionality, uh, and that's an option. You don't have to deploy it if you don't want it, um, so that's a, that's a key thing to note. Uh, let's move on to uh, this slide. This is a variation of the slide that Rana showed you in terms of what we do on CNC. Uh, and in the interest of time, I'm just going to point out the blue things that are really new uh, and the big piece, the big items in the CNC 3.0. We did a presentation at uh, Networking Field Day in uh, in, uh, in the uh, spring time frame in April, uh, going over CNC 2.0 and all the functionality. So we'll focus in this section uh, only on the new things. And SRV6 is brand new in uh, CNC, so we are aligned to... Uh, XR 732 and uh, innovations in the SRV 60E. And Jose will talk in more detail on what we do on the XR side, but I'm just going to cover what we do on the automation side. Um, and then uh, again, quickly to list, right? We do VPNs, L2 VPNs, L3 VPNs. We do SRMPLS and RSVPT since, uh, you know, since 1.0, but now we have added SRV 6 in this release. Um, looking at the right side, in terms of visualization, we have a very rich visual visualization, which you'll see in the demo, uh, but we've added uh, what we call as Flex Algo. Flex Algo has been a key compo key thing that our customers are looking for in terms of uh, dividing up their routing topology into planes, right, using Flex Algos. And we, we can do that now in the 3.0 as well as SRV6. And service health status is a very interesting um, thing that we added in 3.0. Uh, and uh, the thing with that is that we provision L2 VPN or L3 VPN we know what are the key parameters to indicate that the service is up or down, right? We can go and start measuring those proactively and calculate a service health, right? And this is typically like things like, and to just give a very simple example, if it's an L3 VPN or L2 VPN, there's always a PEC link. And what if that link goes down? Or if it's a P L3 VPN, PEC routing protocol goes down, right? We could check all of that proactively over a cadence and present a result and provide notification and alarms on the dashboard that the SP operator can just see and drill down and start troubleshooting even before the customer calls in, right? So that's a new feature we added it. Uh, we call it service health monitoring, and that's uh, new in 3.0. So in, uh, in, uh, in let's just switch to the demo so that we can actually start seeing these things. Uh, so this is my lab in, uh, in, uh, in Cisco that I'm going to use. Um, and so let's go back to the dashboard. Um, so this is kind of a recap of, uh, you know, some of these things that I just mentioned, right? So cross network control is managing a bunch of devices. So the first thing you see is how many devices you manage through CNC and what is its manageability state, if you will, right? It's, are those devices reachable, you know, in terms of what you've detected, are they up or down? Um, so that's the first uh, bit of information we present. The second bit is how many VPNs we have deployed. By the way, this UI is, uh, you know, customizable. As you can see on the right side corner, you can actually go ahead and, uh, you know, take out some of these, um, you know, stamps or dashlets, as our engineers call it, uh, or rearrange them because you're not interested in something or, uh, you know, you want different order, right? Uh, but VPN happens to be the money-making revenue service for our customers. So that's uh, shown here in terms of what's provisioned. And if you have the service health module, we quickly also, you know, present you the status on, whether they're good, bad, or down, right? And you can actually click on these links to get drilled down directly into that and start, you know, troubleshooting or, you know, responding on potentially what will be a customer calling in, right? So that's that. Um, the next layer of things are transport-oriented. This is where we have the SRMPLS policies, your RSBTE, uh, SRV6, which is new in a 3.0. Um, so this is uh, giving you a snapshot of what are the things deployed. And then if you scroll down further, here are the optional components in CNC, the health insights, 
Crosswork app, which is going to do your KPI monitoring. Here it consumes a bunch of telemetry periodically, right? Uh, either streaming or SNMP based. Uh, and it can actually raise thresholds. You can do smart thresholds and it can raise uh, trigger KPIs. And that's a summary of what uh, it's seeing. Uh, change automation is our mop automation tool. It's uh, meant to do maintenance automation. Uh, and you can actually try some of these maintenance flows into a KPI violation, right? That's the programmable cross, uh, cro uh, closed loop uh, automation that uh, we, we, we talk about. Um, and then we have zero touch provisioning as well, which is very important for our, uh, mobility uh, customers where they're deploying large scale uh, you know, front hall back hall networks with lots of routers. From the main uh, use cases that we talked about in terms of your VPN and SDN for transport, right, traffic engineering, it'll, most of the action happens in the service, uh, services and traffic engineering view. And so let's go ahead and look at the traffic engineering first, right? What, what's the status of IPv6 uh, in Crosswork? Uh, can I run this in an environment where I do not have legacy IP? Yes, you can run it in a pure IPv6 environment. And we do have a few customers that are actually, um, you know, in the lab trials with our product with that. Beautiful, thank you. Okay, so this is the topology that I said uh, we, we learned from uh, BGP link state, right? So your routers, uh, you know, at least one router in each routing domain will run uh, BGP link state with the SRPCE, the Cisco SRPC that's sitting inside the CNC complex. And then we have integration, uh, you know, north of that with the optimization engine app, right? So basically it's able to consume the whole TE database, routing database and present a picture like this, right? So this is very key uh, information. And then uh, because uh, the SRPC is also aware, it's stateful, meaning every time you request a path or you, uh, you meaning head end request a path or does its own path and calculation and creates a policy, it reports all of those SR policies and we have a whole database of those policies, which you can actually click and see you know, where to where is that policy going, um, you know, what, uh, what is the interesting part. Uh, you can go and look at the IGB paths you know, and uh, see you know, all of that information presented in a very nice, easy to access database. The, the SR and PLS part we already did uh, in 2.0, in 3.0 SRV6 is a net new thing, right? So you have the same experience in terms of all the policies that you've created on SR v6 uh, including odn policies on demand next hop policies um, and then we have rsvpt for legacy uh, deployments where they want to use rsvpt uh, let me drill down a little bit more into what we can actually show in terms of what we have learned so if you click on any router here here we are showing all the information that we have gleaned right by uh, by the bgp link state protocol as well as additionally we, we go and do snmp query on the system map to find out what is the hardware platform uh, and uh, we allow you to enrich it with uh, you know things like latitude longitude through uh, apis and uh, you know that enables us to do a map displays right uh, if you go into SRMPLS, here you can see uh, you know not only the policies but you also see the uh, you know the label blocks that are assigned, the flex algos that are in play. Uh, you can go into links uh, and see the uh, link adjacencies. Uh, for example, right, if I click on this link, now you see all the, not only the metrics and the um, flex algo affinities, flex algo topologies. If you go to SRMPLS, you will be able to see the adjacencies that are in play as well, right? So that's key. Uh, and if you go to SRV6, you will be able to see the SRV6 information as well for that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the SRV6 info uh, for a node. Um, so let's see here. So here in the SRV6 point of view, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, prefixes are called, uh, are basically associated with the locators. And for each uh, flex algo, you can create a locator, and then the um, it's called. Uh, we implement what we call as micro SID. Again, Jose will cover in the uh, post break session a lot more detail on what micro SID is and why it's a better option when you do SRV6. Um, so then you can see the uh, micro SIDs for adjacencies, um, and uh, you can see the micro SIDs for node, which is shown as UN here, um, and all that information. Now let's switch to Flex Algo. So Flex Algo is another key component. Uh, our customers are looking to simplify SRTE deployment, right? So when you deploy uh, SRTE, usually you end up with uh, you know with uh, a bunch of hop by hop uh, segments that you want to send it. Each of those becomes a label, right? Your segment identifier. If you use Flex Algo, it simplifies even more, right? You can create a Flex Algo where you're using, for example, in this case. 
uh, the routing metric is going to be latency, which can be dynamic, right? Measured the SRPM. So you don't need multiple labels in that case. When you're going from the left-hand side out to the right-hand side, you can just send it to the prefix set corresponding to flex algo 128, and it'll automatically be routed through the you know latency metric uh, shortest path, right? So that's super useful because it saves a lot of label space and the uh, you know avoids a lot of the maximum segment depth issues with flex algo. Um, here's another example, which is a very popular use case from our customers, where FlexAlgo 131 and 132 are basically trying to be disjoint from each other, right? Here we are doing affinity to avoid bottom here, exclude any affinity bottom, and here we are doing in 132 the opposite. Now, let me show you how do you visualize that, which is where the key thing uh, we have added in um, 3.0 is that we've added a FlexAlgo visualization filter. You go ahead and click that, and you check which FlexAlgo you want to view, right? Let's pick 131, which is saying, uh, just show me the top, uh, you know, clear topology with only top links in it, right? So this is the green links that are part of the um, the top topology. Now let's compare it with another uh, flex algo that's in play here. I'm going to select 132 and apply. Now you can see there is disjointness, right? The green topologies are the top green plane, if you will, and then the the pinkish magentaish plane is on the bottom. Um, that's uh, that's super useful for our, uh, for operations on day two, right? It's very really hard to go and keep that kind of information or build tooling uh, to, to do this kind of displays. So um, this is super useful. Um, uh, this is what I want to cover in Flex Algo Visualization. Next, let's go ahead and look at SRV6, right? So let's go ahead and start from a VPN where we actually have SRV6 provision, right? So VPN 103 in this case, what I have done is that I've already created a VPN, and uh, you know, uh, by the way, this. Uh, let's talk a little bit about this VPN config itself, right? So I'm going to show you the uh, JSON formatted uh, VPN uh, payload. This is the uh, northbound model, uh, or uh, or basically, this is the payload you would send into CNC when you want to create this VPN, right? This structure of this model is actually being uh, standardized by IETF. It's called IETF L3NM network model. And we have adopted that as the north facing interface, right? And this is the consuming, uh, this is what uh, a system sitting on top of CNC would consume, right? Um, and they, they can send uh, a payload like this and we can provision a L2 VPN, L3 VPN or L2 VPN for that matter. And um, and what we are, I'm scrolling down to show you is that as part of this, there is a policy, right? What that policy is doing is that it's saying that when you get customer fixes and we redistribute those into VPN V4 or V6, we mark it with the BGP color community, right? Now that results in, um, uh, in uh, all the head ends getting that BGP prefix and then instantiating uh, the tunnels on demand. That's a, basically the on demand next top technology, right? So what you're seeing here is that we're in the context of a VPN, which has a policy that's coloring its prefixes, and that has resulted in um, these three uh, sites that are part of this L3 VPN to have a full mesh of T tunnels, right? So this is what we are we are showing you here, and the color in this case happens to be 6001. So um, what we are we are saying is that when you're in a VPN and you're using uh, TE to get a fine grained granularity. Uh, and these tunnels are being essential on the fly, how do you keep track of all of those, right? Uh, so we're making it really easy for you to go drill down into a VPN and see which are the policies that VPN is using. And then you can actually select that VPN and see what are the paths, right? Hop by hop paths um, that's, uh, you know, you being used between PEA and PEB, right? The, the, this particular VPN uh, had three PE, so now you have uh, six tunnels, right, uh, in the full mesh concept, right? Um, and if you want to drill down further and see uh, the TE details, you know, this is where you'd go and see those details, right? You would see um, the source IP, this is SRV6, so you see the loopback, IPv6 loopback, and then you see the IP um, uh, tail end loopback, and then you see the color, you see a bunch of candidate paths, these are created by ODN, so it's BGP paths, and you see the, uh, you know, um, that it's actually trying to optimize the latency, so this customer wants latency optimized paths. Uh, and then you go, uh, because of that, you're going adjacency SIDs, you know, hop by hop, and here are your SIDs. Um, you know, a lot of information at your fingertips to, uh, you know, to understand what's going on or to troubleshoot um, and, uh, you know, manage these networks. Um, in terms of creation, uh, like I showed you the path for ODN, in which case you're just binding a policy and creating an uh, ODN template. But you can also create static policies. You would go to provisioning, and uh, this is the provisioning screen. 
and you'd go to policies and you would just click here and click, uh, show uh, create it. I'll just show a policy that's already created um, uh, in interest of time. You'd give head end, tail end, color. Uh, this is not a non get what we call a static policy, right? And a path preference, you give a number of paths in here with you know different objectives and criteria. Um, it constraints, um, and then you can also come down here and here's the SRV6 specific information you give, um, and then the locator, right? So, so that's um, that's how you provision. Okay, uh, I was going to show you uh, service health monitoring, but as you can see here, this is the uh, thing that we added in uh, CNC 3.0 health monitoring, and you can see this service is down. And basically, what you can do here is you can drill down and look at, you know, what why is it down, and you, we, 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 you can see here all the things we check. We call it assurance graph, and you can see the EBGB session is down, and this is super useful in terms of, uh, you know, to, you know, knowing what what's going on at the VPN and why it's down and uh, how to troubleshoot, right? So you really can zoom into a problem. Again, this assurance is also coming from an assurance model, which is also field extensible. Meaning, if you go to change your VPN flavor to something else, our CX uh, professional services uh, can go ahead and extend this assurance model as well and add more fancier knobs that you want to check.